Hi there, and welcome back to Brush Up Trivia, the best trivia podcast with a magenta and periwinkle logo. Hope you all had a great week and are ready for some questions. Now, I know you're listening to me, but to be honest, I'm not quite sure how. That's because we are on a boatload of platforms, Spotify, YouTube, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and Stitcher. Of course, we're also on Twitter, at Brush Up Trivia, where you can get questions that just don't make it into the podcast, and additional trivia ephemera. Just like last time, I have seven rounds for you, and each round has five questions. Let's get into it. The theme for round one is Little Flop of Horrors. Answer these questions about horror movies that didn't rake in the big bucks. Question one. John Carpenter's Halloween and Escape from New York did well at the box office, but what 1982 flick, which had scenes filmed in Alaska and on a refrigerated studio set, surprisingly had lackluster performance? Question two. It is the boundary of a black hole, where once light enters, it cannot come back out. It's also coincidentally the title of what Lawrence Fishburne movie that had lots of money put into it, but didn't have lots of money coming back out. Question three. Bram Stoker's Dracula was a smash hit in the early 90s. This other classic 19th century novel adaptation? Not so much. Not even Kenneth Branagh got crowds to the theater as he played what title monster? Oh, sorry. Title doctor. Question four. Death House was written by Gunnar Hansen and made less than $14,000. Gunnar played Leatherface in what far more successful horror slasher? And question five. Manos, The Hands of Fate, Soul Taker, and Mitchell were all panned by critics, and for this reason were screened aboard the Satellite of Love in what 90s cult TV show. Moving right on to round two. The theme here is a funny thing happened on the way to decorum. Answer five questions all about etiquette rules of days gone by. Question one. Victorian elites made many frivolous fashion rules, like this one, which says you can't wear what color after Labor Day? Question 2. While saying, God bless you, is polite, Pope Gregory the Great commanded that it must be said immediately, since sneezing was seen as the first sign of what disease that spread across Europe? Question 3. Rule 5 of what code states, if swords are used, the parties engage until one is well bloodied, disabled, or disarmed, or until, after receiving a wound and blood being drawn, the aggressor begs pardon? Question 4. Folks used to dress up to go to sporting events, but now you can just wear the same shirt as the players, called a what? Question 5. Since they found no scriptural justification for celebrating it, and associated it with its pagan undertones, the New England Puritans could be fined five shillings for celebrating what holiday? You know that I've been having some fun writing these questions. I'll give you answers right after this next round, which is called Hello Raleigh. No, not Walter. Here are a few questions about the North Carolina city. Question one. Raleigh is in the Research Triangle, so-called because of three smarty-pants colleges. Name one of them. Question two. Need a break from the city? Head over to Pullen Park, where you can take a spin on what kind of attraction, featuring an ostrich, giraffe, rabbit, goat, tiger, and of course horses. Question three. True or false, Raleigh's the capital of North Carolina. Question four. In Raleigh, be sure to check out the pit or the humble pig for what kind of food famous in the region. Question five. Raleigh is known as the city of what acorn bearing tree which line its downtown? Okay, it's answer time. Round one was little flop of horrors. And question one, John Carpenter's Halloween and Escape from New York did well at the box office, but what 1982 flick, which had scenes filmed in Alaska and on a refrigerated studio set, surprisingly had lackluster performance? Well, that is the thing. I know it's very well regarded, but it just did not do well at the box office. Question two, 
It's the boundary of a black hole where once light enters, it cannot come back out. Also, coincidentally, the title of a Lawrence Fishburne movie that had lots of money put into it, but no money coming out. That is Event Horizon. I think they barely made back half their budget. Question three. Bram Stoker's Dracula was a smash hit in the early 90s. This other classic 19th century novel adaptation, not so much. Not even Kenneth Branagh got crowds to the theater as he played Frankenstein. And Frankenstein is not the name of the monster, but Frankenstein is the name of the doctor who created the monster. Question four. Death House was written by Gunnar Hansen and made less than $14,000. But Gunnar played Leatherface in what far more successful horror slasher? Well, that's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It made well over $30 million. And finally, question five. Manos, The Hands of Fate, Soul Taker, and Mitchell were all panned by critics, and for this reason were screened aboard the Satellite of Love on Mystery Science Theater 3000. Okay, round two. A funny thing happened on the way to decorum. Question one I asked, Victorian elites made many frivolous fashion rules, like this one which says you can't wear what after Labor Day? They don't like you wearing white after Labor Day. Question two, it's polite to say God bless you, but Pope Gregory the Great made it mandatory, it must be said, immediately after sneezing, since sneezing was seen as the first sign of the plague that spread across Europe. Question three, rule five of what code states, if swords are used, the parties engage until one is well bloodied, disabled, or disarmed. Or until after receiving a wound and blood being drawn, the aggressor begs pardon. Well, that is the dueling code if swords are used. Question four. Folks used to dress up to go to sporting events, but now you can just wear the same shirt as the players. That shirt they wear is typically called a jersey. I'm glad I can just wear a jersey instead of having to get dressed up to go to a game nowadays. And question five. Since they found no scriptural justification for celebrating it, and they associated it with its pagan undertones, the Puritans could be fined five shillings for celebrating Christmas. And before I give you more questions, how about some answers for Hello, Raleigh? Question one, Raleigh is in the research triangle, so-called because of three smarty pants colleges. I wanted you just to name one of them. You may have well known all three. Duke, North Carolina State and University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Those are the three colleges that make up the research triangle. Question two, this one may have been a bit tricky. Need a break from the city, head to Pullen Park, where you can take a spin on what kind of attraction? Featuring an ostrich, giraffe, rabbit, goat, tiger, and of course, horses. Let's take a spin on a carousel. Yes, all of those animals featured on the carousel there at Pullen Park. Uh, Question three was true or false. Is Raleigh the capital of North Carolina? And that is indeed true. Question four. In Raleigh, be sure to check out the pit and the humble pig. Uh, For what kind of food famous in the region? Well, those are both places where you can get some delicious barbecue. Question five. Raleigh is known as the city of what kind of acorn-bearing tree, which lines its downtown? Well, those are oak trees, Raleigh being the city of oaks. Three rounds now behind us. Hopefully you have had a shot to show off what you know. I'm going to keep things moving into round four, which just like last time is a mystery round. I have five general knowledge questions for you, and all you have to do, apart from giving me five answers, is also figure out the theme that connects all of them. Question one. What bird starts off life with gray feathers only gaining their signature color from pigments in their diet? Question two. Michael Palin says, strange women lying in ponds distributing swords is no basis for a system of government. What sword is he referring to there? Question three. With one leg and a parrot on his shoulder, Long John Silver appears in what Robert Louis Stevenson novel? Question four. It's the same word. Chiromancers read these and date fruits come from them. What are they? And question five. Red Bull sponsored Felix Baumgartner to skydive over 100,000 feet from what layer of the atmosphere? 
Round five is called a mishmash of this and that. All of the answers are going to have this i a phrasing, like you hear in mishmash and this, that. So keep that in mind as you answer these questions. Question one, you could describe the stripe on Charlie Brown's shirt to be what kind of pattern? Question two, good luck getting out just one. What brand of mints come in clear plastic containers? Question three, curios, tchotchkes, baubles, and trinkets. There are lots of words for these little items one may keep in a cabinet or display on the mantle. Name one of the two expressions for these items that fit this round's theme. Question four. In Kung Fu Panda 3, our hero Po doesn't want to hear the villain monologue and asks him to spare me the what? Question five. How could you describe your freshly scrubbed spotless kitchen as well as a cleaning product that can help it get that way? Just like that, two more rounds out of the way. So I'm going to be coming in with two more rounds of answers, starting with round four. If you aren't ready yet, just pause, scroll back. I won't be offended. But I'm going to start giving out some answers. For this mystery round in round four, question one was, what bird starts off life with gray feathers, only gaining their signature color from pigments in their diet? Well, their signature color is pink because we're talking about flamingos. So flamingo being that bird. Question two, Michael Palin said strange women lying in ponds distributing swords is no basis for a system of government. He says that in Monty Python's Holy Grail and the sword he's referring to is Excalibur. Question three, with one leg and a parrot on his shoulder, Long John Silver appears in what Robert Louis Stevenson novel? Well, that is the classic swashbuckling tale of Treasure Island. Question four. They're the same word chiromancers read these and date fruits come from them. Those are both palms. Question five. Red Bull sponsored Felix Baumgartner to skydive over 100,000 feet. From what layer of the atmosphere? That layer is the stratosphere. So stratosphere, palms, treasure island, Excalibur, Flamingo. Those are all the names of casinos in Las Vegas. Maybe you've stayed at one. Round five was a mishmash of this and that. All of the answers had that i a sound. Question one, you could describe the stripe on Charlie Brown's shirt to be a zigzag. Question two, good luck getting out just one. What brand of mints come in clear plastic containers? Those would be Tic Tacs. Uh, there were two possible answers for question three, but I was looking for curios, tchotchkes, baubles, and trinkets, things you may keep in a cabinet or display on the mantle. Uh, I would say here in America, Nick Knack would be the more popular answer. Um, but also in British English, you may find brick a brack. Uh, so two possible answers there. And if you got one, and that's good enough for me. Question four was going into Kung Fu Panda 3. Poe didn't want to hear the villain monologue. And he asked him to spare me the chit chat. Question five, how could you describe that freshly scrubbed spotless kitchen as well as a cleaning product that can help it get that way? Well, that would be spick and span. Even I wouldn't believe that we only have two rounds left, but in fact, that is the case. Round six is another mystery round. I'll give you some questions, see if you can figure out the thread that ties all of them together. Question one. Acting as a squire to Don Quixote, what man is usually depicted riding a donkey? Question two. Hillary Clinton's Twitter bio once described herself as a hair icon and what kind of aficionado? Question three. 
When Emperor Naruhito took the chrysanthemum throne on May 1st, 2019, he ushered in a new era. What country is now in the Reiwa era, which translates to beautiful harmony? Question 4. Literally meaning tank, what was the name of the tank that made up the majority of the German armored force in World War II? Question 5. Clad in white, Whitney Houston sang what song on January 27th, 1991? As we count down to the end of the questions here, this last round is just called 54321. Question one, the tympanic membrane has nothing to do with the instrument, but plays a key role in our ability to perceive what sense? Question two, which golden girl mother would often tell the others stories from Sicily? Question three, in what book from Suzanne Collins' dystopian series do we witness the quarter quell? Question four, featuring an image based on radio waves collected from a pulsar, what Joy Division album features the songs Shadow Play and New Dawn Fades? And finally, question five, the last question of the quiz. Writing under the pen name of Ellis Bell, what novel did Emily Bronte publish in 1847? I hope to run that round more often, so if you can figure out what the title means, it will certainly behoove you. I have no more questions for you today, so before I let loose these last answers, please share us with your friends and check out at Brush Up Trivia on Twitter for more trivia bits. As you can tell, this whole operation is still a bit new, so if you have things you'd like to see or helpful hints in podcasting, please pass them along. So let's give some answers to round six. Question one Acting as squire to Don Quixote, what man is usually depicted riding a donkey? That is Sancho Panza. Question two, Hillary Clinton's Twitter bio once described herself as a hair icon and a pants suit aficionado. Question three, Emperor Naruhito took the chrysanthemum throne on May 1st, 2019. Japan is now in the Reiwa era. Japan being the right answer there. Question four, literally meaning tank, what was the name of the tank that made up the majority of the German armored force in World War II? Well, that would be the Panzer. And finally, question five, clad in white. On January 27th, 1991, for the Super Bowl, Whitney Houston sang the Star Spangled Banner. And if you look at all of those answers, Japan, Panzer, Star Spangled Banner, Pantsuit, Sancho, Panza, they all have that P-A-N, Pan, coming up in all of them. And that leaves us just with round seven, five, four, three, two, one. Question one, the tympanic membrane has nothing to do with the instrument, but plays a key role in our ability to perceive hearing Question two, which golden girl mother would often tell the other stories from Sicily? That would be Sophia. Question three, in what book from Suzanne Collins' dystopian series do we witness the quarter quell? Well, that's in Catching Fire. Question four, featuring an image based on radio waves caught from a pulsar, the Joy Division album, Unknown Pleasures features the songs Shadow Play and New Dawn Fades. And finally, question five, writing under the pen name of Ellis Bell, Emily Bronte published Wuthering Heights in 1847. That's it for me. Thanks for brushing up with me, everybody. Take care.